Yeah. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a very special day. After a very long time, uh, we have the, the global lecture series again. Uh, it's been, I think, five or uh, around six months uh, since we last uh, we had the last final uh, global lecture series webinars. So it's a great pleasure to have uh, Dr. Uh, Guzman Aquino with us uh, from Guatemala. So this is also interesting to coordinate these global lecture series because we had a chance uh, to have uh, people from different backgrounds, different countries, different languages, different uh, time uh, zones. Uh, this is also interesting to have because uh, it, in some place it's uh, very early morning in, in another, in another, another place it's uh, late night so this is also challenging for us so today uh, dr uh, akino will be uh, presenting a very in my opinion a very interesting and special topic on rural development and natural resources management uh, from the perspective of guatemalan experience so first of all uh, i would like to thank him for being with us and, and then I would like to uh, introduce himself uh, to the uh, audience. And then uh, the floor or the screen is yours, uh, Dr. Aquino. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, good luck with your presentation. And at the end of your presentation, I will have some questions for you. And I'm really looking forward to asking my questions to you. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you very much. And hello to everyone in this, in this meeting. Um, as doctor said, my name is Neri Buanerges Guzman Aquino, and uh, I am from Guatemala. And Guatemala is a little country in Central America. And um, my, my professional background uh, and, or my profession is uh, uh, agricultural engineering with a specialization in the natural resources. That is why I am interested in, in, in working on, on this on this on this topic and, and on this area and also I, I got a master master degree uh, in South Korea um, in public policies and uh, rural development as well and um, actually <clears throat> I am working as a professor or or as teacher in the University of San Carlos of Guatemala is the main university in my country and um, also I am working uh, at the Ministry of Agriculture in my country as well. I, I like to, to, to share this with you because uh, these two uh, fields of, uh, of working uh, makes, uh, I don't know, makes my, my, my experience or, or my, my um, contributions to, to, the, <clears throat> to the country uh, more complete, I guess because I uh, make some contributions in the academic in, in the academic side and also I make some contributions in the um, uh, in, in the field in, in the in the application field of the agriculture in my country so <clears throat> that is why I I came here to Turkey and uh, invited by uh, by uh, the Altimbas University and uh, I would like to share this topic with you um, this topic, rural development and natural resources management, case of Guatemala, uh, is the way that somehow we are we are trying we are trying to get the the rural development in our, in our country. So um, let's let's have a, a look and um, please feel free of uh, um, raising your hand or, or or make some questions. Of course, uh, Doctor. I said that uh, we will have some time after the presentation to, to, to make some questions, but I think you can make um, your questions maybe in the in the inbox or, or in the in the text message and in the in, in the platform of, 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 of this meeting. Okay, um, let's let's begin. And during this uh, uh, this presentation, we will talk about th three main areas. And the first one is the location of my country, right? I want you to make, uh, or I want you to be aware about where we are 
or where we do exist in the world. Um, we are a little, a little country um, in Central America, you will see in the presentation. And also I want, I want, um, I want to share with you um, in general terms, what do we have in our country? What do we have to, to get that uh, rural development that, that, we, that we desire? And, and also in the third part, we will talk about some strategies that we are proposing or, or that we are working on to get that rural development that, that we, that we uh, desire at the end of, of the time. So these are the three main topics that we will talk about during this presentation. And uh, of course, the first one is the location. For you to be um, aware, where is the, the um, country? Uh, let me look, let me use this one. As you can see in, in the, uh, in, on your screen, <clears throat> this is the American continent, right? And as I told you, Guatemala is located in Central America. And uh, this is the place in where my little country is located, right? And here you, you can see the map in a, in a bigger size, right? And um, um, also for general information, I want to tell you that um, compared to Turkey, we are about nine or 10 times smaller than Turkey because we have uh, 108,889 uh, uh, square kilometers area. And um, I think we can, we can go through the country uh, by car, maybe in 10 hours from, from the Southern part up to the Northern part. So it is very small. And I say no in Turkey, uh, you can do that, but maybe in, in three or four days. So it means that it's so big country, so big country. And also in Guatemala, <clears throat> we have uh, um, three uh, main uh, group of languages. Uh, of course, um, the, 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 the language that speak the majority of people is Spanish. And also we have 24 Mayan languages and they are different languages. Uh, uh, this is an heritage from the Mayan civilization. <clears throat> this is a kind of treasure we have in there because uh, um, we are a multilingual uh, country. And also we have uh, the Garifuna language. This one is, uh, um, uh, this one comes, we can say, as an heritage uh, of African Africa, African people <clears throat> um, that uh, uh, came with um, England, with, with England people when Guatemala and Central America and America was colonized um, too many years ago. And uh, about territory administration, Guatemala is divided by 22 departments uh, or province. Uh, right in in some places, um, this kind of uh, the political uh, administration or division is called department. In another uh, countries, uh, this kind of division is called provinces. Right, just for you to make it uh, uh, or to make or to look at the difference. And also, we are divided by uh, three hundred and forty municipalities or counties among the country. This is the, the territorial administration we have in Guatemala. I mentioned this just for making you aware or to know uh, what are we talking about, okay? And the next topic is what do we have? In general terms, um, I would like to start for the, um, the main asset we have uh, in, 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 in any countries, right? Um, the main asset we have is people, right? Is, is, is the main resource we have or the most important resource we have. And in Guatemala, we have 17.4 um, millions of people. Uh, we are kind of small, small population country, we can say. 
uh, but compared to other countries, uh, also they have maybe more land and also they have more population. And, and it makes uh, somehow a similar situation. But um, in the other side, we have, um, or we can compare to other countries that uh, they have so much land, but few population like uh, maybe Turkey, right? Turkey, I know that um, you have about 80, 85 million uh, population. I don't know if you, I am wrong, but I asked someone and he is fr from Turkey and, and that person told me that, that that is more or less the, the population that you have. But the, the, the land you, you own is much more than than the one we have in Guatemala. So it means that the density of population in Turkey is less than the density of population we have in Guatemala. Just for, just for sharing this, this information. And uh, <clears throat> the territory uh, is composed um, in the rural area uh, um, represents the 48% of the land and the urban area represents uh, 52 percent of the land in, in, in my country and also um, the population divided by gender we can say that uh, we have a uh, 49 percent of of males in there and 51 percent of me females so the population is like that we have more um, females in there um, but maybe this is due to some um, some issues that are happening in, in the world, maybe because of uh, climate change or I don't know, some, 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 something that, that um, the um, uh, evolution system is, is making, right? So this is for, for sharing this uh, uh, interesting information. And uh, um, the density of the population in our country is located as you can see in the in the picture, right? Um, the places that you are looking at the map and with with red color, these are the places that have the more dense density of population. As you can see, it's in the middle of the country, and um, also this part is the highland part. And also this part of the country is uh, the, 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 the land that is occupied by, um, by indigenous, indigenous uh, uh, population, if I can say like that. And um, this is the more crowded, the more crowded region uh, of the country. And the rest of the country, you, you can see that is, uh, um, um, is changing the, the density of population, um, and in this part, it's not that it's not that high the density because this part is uh, um, is occupied by um, forest and uh, natural resources and um, national parks for conservation of nature, and that is why you don't see that. Uh, um, density of population in here, just in this part, in where you can you can um, find the the head, the head of of the of the department. And um, okay, let's continue. So now, according to the natural resources we have, and uh, that we believe that we can use. Uh, to develop our countries, to develop our communities, develop our economy. Um, we have many, many resources. And um, of course, I think personally that actually we are not using, we are not using them in a right way. That is why we are under the situation we are actually. So according to my thinking, <clears throat> I... I um, want to share with you um, this map. 
and maybe you cannot see the, the, the difference because the, 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 the pictures um, or the shapes are small, but maybe you can see the color. Um, according to, to the map, this area, the central area, the mountainous area or the highlands area is occupied by this uh, brown color. This brown color uh, means that is uh, coffee fields or coffee coffee crops uh, production, right? And, and if you can see the difference, uh, it says that we have many, many, many coffee coffee pardon, uh, coffee fields production, and uh, also um, on the other hand, this uh, red color uh, means um urban areas urban areas and if you compare the coffee production fields with the urban areas we have a lot of land occupied by coffee production fields right and also on the other hand this uh, red color as i told you means that this is protected area and is a uh, forest forest uh, um, for conservancy and also uh, this uh, uh, sky blue color, I, I see sky blue color. Uh, also, this is um, a land occupied by another kind of forest. This is um, um, pines, type of pines uh, forest. And also this one is uh, uh, magnolio, magnoliophyte, magnoliophyte uh, uh, forest, and this is Pinophyte uh, forest. Uh, both sides are forest, but different species of, of the forest. And um, that is what we have according uh, to the use of land, uh, the, the main categories, right? I mentioned uh, the coffee land or, or coffee fields, um, urban area, and the forest. The forest occupied by um, Pinophyte uh, species and also by um, Magnoliophytes species, right? I hope I am being um, clear enough. If not, you can raise your hand and, and ask, and I will like to 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 repeat uh, whenever you want. So um, the next information is about water. Um, we have about 38 watersheds in our country. It means that we have um, topography or um, our country has uh, many, many um, mountainous area and uh, um, drain, drain system is very complex in there. And uh, you can see in here the, the, the 38 watersheds located. And uh, also, um, because of that, we collect yearly about uh, 157.9 cubic kilometers of water year by year. It means it is a lot, a lot of water. And uh, from that amount of water, we can say that uh, uh, we, we have 63.4 cubic kilometers um, of superficial flow of water. And uh, from that, we have um, 94.5 cubic kilometers underground water. So that is the, 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 um, the composition of the water we have in, in, in Guatemala, in our country. And um, we, um, we know and we take these resources as one of the most important resources that we have. Also, human resources is good, is, is, is important. Water resources uh, also are important. Soil resources are important. And the, the other resources that, that I will share with you um, in, the next, in the next slides. Okay, um, talking about soil, um, generally, I can say that uh, um, the majority of the soils in, in Guatemala are um, or they have a volcanic origin because in some um, 
uh, in some uh, era or in some time in the um, origin of the land that Guatemala has, uh, there were many volcano eruptions. So that is why uh, the soil in my country is composed by uh, volcanic material. And it makes uh, this kind of soil very fertile and also the texture and the um, um, composition of the soil is uh, in the majority of, of, of the land is very good to crop uh, or to produce many kinds of, uh, of plants or crop production. Of course, it uh, depends on the, on the temperature and the, um, um, the rainfall and um, um, the, 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 the deep of the soil. But uh, according to, to, according to, um, according to the uh, uh, quality of the soil, we can crop or we can plant, we can produce any kind of plants in there. And also a part of the botanic origin soil, we, we have sedimentary, sedimentary uh, soils because of the rainfall, right? Um, um, the, the soils sometimes are under a process of uh, erosion and uh, the, this soil is uh, moved by, by the water during the rainfall and it is uh, uh, located in, in the southern part or in the lowest part in the country. And it uh, conform this kind of uh, soil, sedimentary soil, which are also very fertile, right? Because uh, um, um, whenever we have rainfall, um, the water flow is uh, um, conducting these uh, particles of soil and which are very fertile. And uh, as I told you, this uh, amount of soil is uh, um, deposited in the, in the lowest area of the, of the country. And uh, of course, these areas are um, plain, are plain and it is more easy to, to, to cultivate these, these areas. And uh, General information about soil is, is uh, this one. Of course, we have more, more dates or more information, but generally for you to understand or for you to, to, to get the pictures about we have, what do we have and what we can do to, to, to take advantage of these natural resources, I am sharing with you just this small uh, information. And um, the next, resources we have is uh, the touristic resources. This is also very important. Um, and uh, I will mention, or I will share with you um, some of the most famous places or some of the most uh, famous touristic resources we have in Guatemala. And one of them is the, the national park called Tikal. This is situated in the northern part of the country. And this is very famous and very important to our economy, to our country, because uh, this is um, the Mayan civilization kingdom heritage. Uh, in there, uh, the Mayan civilization was uh, develop, developing um, their sculpture um, so much time, time ago, maybe, 1,500 years ago. And um, we have all that kind of history and uh, assets that the Maya civilization um, gave to us in Guatemala as uh, uh, their heritage. And also we have uh, uh, many groups of people and also we have their languages that I told you before. You remember, we have 24 languages uh, that comes from the Mayan civilization. And also these are great assets we have uh, as a touristic, um, um, touristics, um, 
characteristics assets let's say let's say like that and um, the next place i will share with you is uh, la chua lagoon um this uh, lagoon is very special <clears throat> because uh, the color of water is like the, it's like the sky color as you can see the picture um somehow uh, the lagoon uh, seems like a mirror because uh, um, you cannot make the difference about the color of the sky and the color of the water, right? Because, um, and this is, this is because of the kind of soil that exists in that area. And also something important uh, about this site is that uh, in there, generally, the temperature is, uh, is kind of, uh, is uh, warm. And um, somehow with, uh, with uh, a little bit humidity and uh, it makes the environment um, comfortable and uh, enjoyable. And also <clears throat> um, this lagoon is bordered by a big tropical forest that is protecting uh, the, um, the water or the lagoon and it makes uh, more interesting um, to get access to to this uh, to this site, so um, if you have the opportunity of visiting Guatemala, I recommend you to visit this place as well. And the next the next uh, uh, asset touristic asset is the Atitlan Lake, and also it is called Blue Lake. Why is called this blue Blue Lake? Because of the water is is blue. Is it, it, it is a a very dark blue color. And why and do we do we think that uh, uh, the color is like that? We think that uh, the color is uh, that uh, blue or that dark blue because of the temperature of the of the water and also the origin of the soil. And another interesting thing about this lake is that uh, it's bordered by volcanoes. Uh, it is about four or three or four volcanoes. And um, also <clears throat> this situation gives to this site um, very interesting um, characteristics because of the soil, because of the nutrients that water has. And um, um, of course, maybe this situation makes uh, the color uh, of the water like this. And also, this is uh, um, heritage of the Maya civilization because, as I shown in the in the map before, all the highlands and the middle part of the country is occupied by this small um, small group of people that comes from the Mayan civilization. And uh, <clears throat> the next sites um, or the next assets are the waterfalls. In Guatemala, we have about 70, uh, 27 waterfalls, beautiful, beautiful waterfalls. And um, of course, we have 38 main rivers. And, and, and as you remember, I mentioned that we have about uh, 38 rivers or 38 watersheds. And of course, um, because of that, we have 38 main rivers. 38 water sheets and 38 rivers, right? It, it, it makes sense. <clears throat> so also these are very, very nice assets we have in Guatemala. Uh, and uh, we think that all these kind of uh, assets um, are very useful and uh, uh, can help us to achieve the develop, rural development that we, that we desire, right? And um, we are trying to 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 um, to take advantage of these assets to um, to reach that rural development. And also, the other side is called Antigua Guatemala. This place has a very important um, history because um, in this place the the country was uh, or, or had um, its, its beginning, if, if I can say like that, because um, 
when the colonization um, took place in Guatemala starts in, in Antigua Guatemala. After, after some time, because of some natural disaster that occurs in one, one no, in 1821, um from from that from that natural disaster the capital city has to move from antigua guatemala to the new to the new place in where the capital city is, is situated now so that is why this uh, uh, place is very important because uh it has uh, all these kind of uh, history issues and um, something interesting about this place is that there are there are many temples, religious temples, uh, Catholic temples, and uh, the density of the temples in that place is about uh, 30 temples in 1.4 square kilometers. Uh, it, it is very, very huge amount, amount of temples in a very low uh, area, as I can say. Here in Turkey, you have also many temples, right? Uh, in maybe it can be a similar a similar quantity of temples or density of the temples, and um, we have in there more than 500 years of history in that place, and also uh, because of the colony, the colony um, stage of Guatemala, in that place we have a very special gastronomy. That also I invite you to to try or, or to try or to taste if you have the opportunity of visiting Guatemala or Antigua Guatemala. <clears throat> so now, um, what we uh, are trying or what what we do propose um, to use these natural resources uh, to get or to um, improve the rural development in, in Guatemala um, is as follows. We, we are trying to, to get or to propose some strategies. And uh, also, uh, <clears throat> we know that we cannot talk only about rural development. We, nowadays, we know that we have to talk also about urban development, right? Because both areas are linked. Both areas depend one of the other, right? So if we get the rural development, we also uh, uh, get uh, the urban development. And uh, we, if, if we help or get the urban development, we also get the rural development like that. So um, the strategies that we are trying or we believe that we have to implement are as follows. Uh, first of all, we need to contribute to the poverty alleviation. And how how do we do that? How do we do that? Or how how can we do that? Um, we have to do it by increasing investment and education level because actually in Guatemala the education level is uh, still low, and um, um, all we know that an educated um, country uh, can can grow up economically and very very easy and, and fast. But in our situation, in our conditions, uh, the education level is still low. So that is why we think we have to invest uh, as much as possible in education. And also, the other strategy to poverty alleviation is. Uh, uh, to, to give more or to bring more technique and technological assistance for crop production, of course, against climate change, because actually because of uh, um, economic issues and um, climate change issues as well, we are having um, very low yield of the crop production and it uh, requires more more investment and um, more uh, assistance from the technicians 
uh, that allows to the farmers to produce there's uh, um there's land or, or, the, or there's uh, uh, crop production as well as they can. Because uh, if there is no help from the technicians or technology, maybe the situation will not change. Uh, that is why we believe that uh, we need to invest also, we need to invest more in this kind of uh, um, assistance. And the next strategy to poverty alleviation uh, can be uh, to have more investment and increase job opportunities. Because um, there is a situation nowadays that the price of the um, um, basic livings is increasing. The gas, for instance, or fuel, and uh, um, maize, corn, beans, the price is increasing, but salary uh, is still the same. And this situation makes uh, day by day harder to survive and uh, to, to develop the economy. Um, that is why we recommend to invest more and uh, increase the job opportunities for people. And the next um, strategy to poverty alleviation is also because of that, to to, to pay fair salaries. Because of the situation I mentioned before, right? Uh, the price of the things are increasing, but uh, the salaries are still the same. So that is why it is very important to, to give fair salaries to the, to the people. And the next strategy to poverty alleviation that we recommend, and that we believe, and that, that we are trying to, to, to work on is to increase the quality of health, of healthcare and services. Because as you know, uh, if you have um, a population that is not healthy, uh, maybe would not be able to work. And also uh, we will not be able, we will not be able to learn if you are at school because you are sick, right? So that is why we, re we recommend um, to enhance or to, to increase the quality of health and healthcare service in Guatemala as a strategy uh, to the poverty alleviation. Uh, these are some of the main strategies. Of course, there must be more strategies, more uh, elaborated strategies, but uh, at, the, at this stage that is uh, maybe somehow the first stage uh, we are trying to implement at least these strategies. And also, <clears throat> um, these strategies and the way that we want to develop the rural area and the rural area. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yes? uh, you asked me to remind uh, the time and we have around five or six minutes. So I'm really sorry to say that, but uh, I'm doing that because you asked me to do. Uh, we have five or six minutes, uh, but it's going very well. And I have my questions as well. Thank you very much. I think I am on time. Thank you very much. Okay. And the way that we want to do it is in a very sustainable way. Because if we don't make this kind of uh, proposal sustainable, maybe it's not a good idea to, to be involved in this kind of issues, right? So why or how can, can we make these uh, strategies uh, sustainable? We think that we can use the tourism strategies or to take advantage of these touristic uh, uh, resources we have. Why? Because if we have, or if we depend on the touristic resources, um, we have opportunity of, uh, um, get better in every way, in every sense. Why? Because uh, having a good and uh, big forest uh, is good for environment and also it is good for touristic, uh, as a touristic attractive. And uh, having a um, nice place, a clean place, an ordered place is also very good for people very good for society and is also very good for 
uh, or as a touristic attractor, right? So that is why we think that the better way to make sustainable the rural and urban uh, development is by applying and uh, tourism strategies. And uh, what do we propose is to develop some culinary tourism strategies, uh, coffee tourism strategies, because we have many coffee land in there. And um, uh, among these tourism assets we have, uh, we can also develop a natural tourism um, uh, taking advantage, of course, um, of the birds, birds uh, uh, watching and the plants uh, watching also flowers, uh, wild flowers, and also the different species of trees that we have because uh, we live in a tropical area and diversity is also one of the assets we have. We have a very huge diversity, diversity of, of animals and plants. So this is also a very good asset we have. And also another um, strategy to make sustainable the economy or the rural and urban development is to train people, to, uh, to teach people, uh, young and current generation, uh, to maintain and to get involved in this kind of strategies and activities uh, that will permit or will allow to, to develop the economy. And also um, another strategy is to develop touristic places that we have and also in, enhance infrastructure or invest in more infrastructure um, um, enhancing the touristic places. And of course, not just in the rural, but also in the urban areas, like restaurants, museums, or archeological sites. And um, as I told you, these are the main strategies of the general strategies that we are working on and we propose to, to implement to get the rural development. So these are the main topics that I wanted to share with you. And uh, now, um, if you want, uh, the time is free for your questions and I will uh, be very grateful if you ask something. And of course, it will be my pleasure to give you answer. Yes, I Thank you so much uh, for your presentation and uh, the uh, strategies you're proposing for the Guatemalan experience. And I have uh, something in my mind because I'm also interested in uh, development, uh, sustainable development and strategies, uh, ethics or some other issues that we are facing uh, or problems we are facing at the moment. So uh, I'm going to share a photo on the screen and if you can see it uh, on the screen. So it's it was one of the things that a few days ago uh, on Economist cover page, mm -hmm. but there was a very scary uh, cover page of Economists. I'm not sure if you have, see, if you have the chance to see it. So it was like uh, that the title was, the headline was uh, the coming food catastrophe. So it was very scary because we know that if something is on economist cover page, so it's most probably to happen. So uh, it, it's, I can connect it, I can link it with the rural development as well. Because we know, according to statistics, the number of people living in the uh, rural areas are decreasing year by year because there are many reasons. Uh, it's not attractive, so the costs are increasing for people living in rural areas or any other thing. Uh, so uh, what do you think about this problem, uh, food problem that is uh, expected in the coming years? Because uh, without food, so we can't survive, right? So because we, we experienced that during the uh, war between Russia and Ukraine, uh, because uh, that's the number of ex uh, the export or import rates are decreased immediately. So the problems started to occur around the world. So what do you think about this uh, uh, page, uh, this cover page? So how can you interpret uh, this photograph uh, as a researcher? And my additional question is, this will be my final question. 
So what do you think about the COVID effect on rural development? So uh, because we know uh, COVID uh, unfortunately affected, had great impact on many fields of our lives. And what do you think about its effect, uh, impact on the rural development? Thank you so much for your uh, contributions and your answers so far. It will be my pleasure, Professor. Uh, as I could identify, you made two questions, right? Okay. Okay. Exactly. I have two questions. The first one is uh, the cover page related. Uh, so how can we, uh, the food problem, uh, which is expected coming in the following years, in the next years, this was one, uh, one of my questions. The second one is, the follow-up question is the COVID and its ongoing effect on our lives and rural development specifically. Thank you very much. Um, okay, about your first question, um, the economic issues that is coming from uh, the problem among Russia and uh, Ukraine uh, is uh, very bad in, in, in many countries. Uh, as, you, as, you, as you know, uh, the fertilizers are getting um, expensive in every country and uh, the scarcity of fertilizers is also increasing and the crop production in many countries, well, I can say that every country depends on the chemical fertilizers. So uh, it increased the, the problem uh, in the food uh, and crop production in every country uh, or every developing country. So in Guatemala, <clears throat> this problem uh, is also uh, making a, a, a very, very, um, a very big concern about people in the government and also uh, to the farmers because <clears throat> up to now, we uh, don't have um, uh, a right a right answer to, to this situation, and uh, we still don't know what what to do exactly. But what we are recommending to to the people in the rural area and the farmers is to implement maybe another um, another strategy or another methodology for uh, to fertilize um uh, the fields like and um, using um uh, hydro fertilize fertilization right uh, this is a different way of using the fertilizer and uh, you can save more fertilizer and uh, it will make more, maybe more sustainable uh your uh, the production of the of, of the farmers and also we are recommending and we are trying to implement and uh, recover uh, the techniques to produce organic fertilizer to avoid, uh, for instance, in the place that people used to plant uh, uh, grains like uh, corn and, and, and or maize and um, beans. Before, uh, before this situation, before this economic situation, people used to um, um, to burn, to burn the, ma the material organic in the, in, in the land, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the in the uh in the field. But nowadays we are trying to insist and in trying to um, to teach the people that they don't need to 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 burn the material organic, and uh, we are trying to get involved the people in using organic fertilizers as well, and also um, organic. Uh, uh, control of uh, uh, of the disease and uh, um, um, the insects that affects all the crops. Uh, that is why we are trying to do now because we don't have another option. Of course, we know that it represents it represents maybe less production, but it will be more sustainable. It will be more sustainable and also. It doesn't require uh, that much money, I think. Uh, that is from, from, from the first question. And the second question, of course, uh, the pandemic is affecting uh, the economy in, a, in a many, many ways. Um, and the, the, the main effect of the pandemic uh, in rural development is, uh, um, of course, 
the um, the high demand on on on, on food and uh, other kind of crop productions and uh, the difficulty of producing this this kind of food because uh, farmers are or, or were were also in the lockdown they they were at home during uh, the first stage of the pandemic and at that time there were no opportunity of producing anything right and uh, it makes uh, um, or it produces uh, produces the scarcity of uh, um, of uh, food and, and, and crops and uh, also increases the demand of this kind of uh, of crops and 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 this situation makes very difficult to survive and uh, um, to continue the, the the agricultural activity in 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 the situation of Guatemala that is an underdeveloped country. And I don't know if I could give the answer to your question, Professor, but that is the situation that we are facing in Guatemala uh, among these two topics that you that you asked. So uh, thank you so much for your contribution and for your answers. Uh, it was a great and fruitful session for me and of course, uh, the ones who will be watching afterwards. Uh, dear Neri Guzman, thank you so much for being with us. And we learned lots uh, of information about the case of Guatemala from your perspective. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, hope to see you uh, in the next uh, sessions or in the next uh, lecture series. Uh, that's all. And I'm just finishing uh, recording the session. Uh, take care of yourself. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity and see you later. <laughs>